My name is Qi Zhen, and I'm a PhD student uh, in computer science at Stanford University. So today I will be presenting uh, Caravan in network, uh, practical online learning of in network ML models with labeling agents. This is joint work with my collaborators and mentors at Stanford, Purdue, Sapienza University of Rome, and University of Michigan. So let's talk about computer networking. Uh, in particular, let's talk about using uh, machine learning for a specific class of application uh, called online traffic analysis. To begin with, I will walk through a simple use case called intrusion detection in cybersecurity, which I would refer to many times later in this talk as well. So first, we have packets arriving in a, a, a server in a data center network. These packets are usually encrypted, so it's very difficult to know if they're from malicious origins or not. So after we have these packets, we extract features like timestamps and packet size from these uh, incoming packets. And after that, we feed these features into a machine learning model for inference. This machine learning model is often trained in a way that it can recognize feature patterns in malicious packets. So this model would classify a packet as either malicious or benign. And based on this classification results, uh, we drop malicious packets and, and keep the benign ones. In fact, uh, besides the simple security use case I just mentioned, machine learning based online traffic analysis has been used increasingly in, in both academia and industry in recent years, for example, to enhance the security of infrastructure, infrastructure and to improve network application performance like video streaming. In recent years, there's also a growing incentive to adopt these models in production networks because Machine learning models are very good at mining hidden patterns in hyperdimensional and hidden uh, complex network data. And they are also compatible with widely used encrypted protocols like TLS and QIC. So why is this application challenging in practice? The first observation we have is that networks are getting much faster over the years. And since there are much more data to process in the network, so for example, we are having uh, Ethernet speed increasing from 10 gigabits per second in the early 2000s to over 800 in 2024. The second observation is that the end-to-end -end latency in the network has been reducing drastically. So any significant latency burst can have a profound consequence on service quality or user experience. So these strict latency and throughput requirements motivate machine learning inference to happen in small batches or even on a per packet basis. To cope with this strict latency and throughput requirement in practice, a popular approach is to use small and specialized in network machine learning models, usually deployed in data plane uh, devices or accelerators. Examples include programmable switches, uh, SmartNix, and hardware ASICs. So this approach leads to a drastic reduction in data movement in network, and also consequently a, a drastic reduction in the response latency. So is this good enough? So we, we find that this does not indicate that uh, these small models alone are good enough. This is because a recent trend, we, we find that network patterns or uh, traffic patterns are getting much more complicated. So for example, many packets can have thousands of features as inputs to a machine learning model. Uh, we can also have millions of packets in a, in a single network flow. Moreover, the deployment environments are getting much more diverse, especially in, in production networks. This means that the small model we trained will see a lot of data patterns that did not show up in the training environment. Through empirical experiments, we can see that small models is, are especially vulnerable to unseen data classes or unseen traffic patterns. As you can see in a plot, the blue line corresponding to the small model cannot react properly to uh, classify unseen data classes unless it is continuously retrained after deployment, like what's been shown in the green line. As a result, an emerging direction of research in recent years is to develop foundation models, especially in domains like networking or cybersecurity, uh, both in academia and in industry. These models have been trained on a large corpus of domain-specific data and have demonstrated early promise of reasoning and in-depth analysis of complex data. Moreover, 
they're able to generalize beyond the training environments and produce accurate results in a wide variety of deployment settings. So we've seen two different approaches to machine learning-based network traffic analysis. The first one is using small and specialized network models, which is FOST. The second one using large and versatile foundation models, which is accurate. So the question we would like to ask here is very simple. Can we have the benefits of both? In other words, can we be both FOST and accurate at the same time? So the answer here is yes. We propose that large and small models should work jointly online. And we believe that this should be made feasible through a technique called online machine learning. In online learning, the small model is periodically retrained as fresh, with fresh data in the deployment environment so that it can better adapt to the changing traffic dynamics online. We claim that large models can guide small models via online learning to achieve both speed and accuracy. And next, we would be showing uh, two key insights that make online learning practical. First, we find that even our, uh, larger models might not be used in, in real time as a decision maker. They can be good sources of, of labeling. So let's, uh, again, think about the network intrusion application, uh, net network intrusion detection application for cybersecurity. Instead of letting larger models directly decide whether to drop a, a packet or keep a packet in real, real time, we let these large models generate labels on large batches of incoming data. So in our case, uh, you can think of a label of zero for benign packets or a label of one for malicious packets. And after that, these labeled packets can serve as training data for small uh, models in the online learning process. We note that the data labeling process and the subsequent online learning process do not need to happen in real time. Moreover, we can have further acceleration techniques like large batch inference or massive parallelization to speed up the labeling process. After the small model has been trained, we deploy it to the in-network device where inference needs to happen in real time at network line rate, for example, 400 or 800 gigabits per second. In short, large models can be good sources of labeling in online scenarios even though they cannot be used independently as real-time decision makers. As a case study, we adapt an off-the-shelf foundation model, GPT-4, for data labeling in the intrusion detection application. We compose prompts to make sure that the LLM can understand our input data format and follow our instructions to produce eight labels. Then we create a labeling request in the form of the composed prompt and send it out through the, the GPT-4 API service. We obtain response from the API, and we pass the response for labeled data. So this shows that off-the-shelf foundation models, even though not fine-tuned on domain-specific data, can follow our instructions of labeling to be good labeling sources. So next, we're going to use these generated labels from GPT-4 to retrain a, a real in-network ML model uh, via the online learning process. And what we would like to know here is if online learning with generated labels would bring decent accuracy gain. So we find in an experiment that even though generated labels from GPT-4 are not perfect, they have an average accuracy, labeling accuracy of 70 to 80%. The accuracy gain from online learning with generated labels is comparable with the accuracy gain of online learning with ground truth labels, here from uh, human labelers or data set publishers. So this indicates that these noisy weak supervision labels can also be used for online learning. The second insight we have is that online learning can be triggered sparsely. Generated labels from large models can be used to approximate the online accuracy of small models. And this is something we call the accuracy proxy. For example, if we find that the generative labels from the large models mostly match uh, with the classification results of the small model, then accuracy proxy would have a high value. And we don't have to do retraining here because the traffic is relatively static and the small model is performing well. And we can uh, save system resources and avoid overfitting from excessive retraining. However, if the accuracy proxy is low, indicating the small model has derailed significantly from the large one. 
then we should trigger uh, online training. This is likely because a small model has encountered some traffic dynamics not previously seen before, like new types of attacks or new types of network applications. So in short, sports online learning via accuracy proxy avoids unnecessary retraining for us and saves system resources. So putting these two insights together, uh, we designed a system called a caravan for practical online learning of the network ML models. We will now walk through the workflow of the caravan system. So we start with incoming data. We first collect and sample online data and store them in a streaming database, InfluxDB in our case. These samples uh, come with features, which can be used as inputs to the large models for labeling. They also come with the small models of classification results. So next, we go to the labeling agent, which retrieves data in batches from the streaming database and generates labels for these data via user-defined large models. Note that the labeling agent can use multiple large models, like large-scale DNNs or foundation models for labeling in parallel, but eventually we would like one set of label for each unit of data through the con conflict resolution uh, procedure, for example, through majority voting. The generated labels and the features in the small model's classification results would then flow into the model's validation component. The model's validation component would compute the accuracy proxy and decide if online learning is necessary based on a time series data of accuracy proxies in the past. And if online learning is necessary, the retraining component would form a class balanced data set for retraining. It retrains the model and then it sends back and reinstall the updated weights of the small model in the network data plane devices. So in summary, we have three collaborating pieces here in the Caravan system. So we are now going to introduce how we implement and evaluate Caravan in real networking scenarios. For implementation, we build a prototype with three major pieces. After we send data to the Caravan system, we have a Tofino switch for packet parsing and deparsing to obtain the features inside of, uh, associated with the packets. We then send these features to an FPGA for running uh, the in-network machine learning model, which can go as high as 100 gigabits per second. We also have a server for the Caravan software part that does data labeling and model retraining online. For evaluation, we use two major classes of applications, one in security intrusion detection, the other one in performance enhancement. IoT traffic classification. Uh, we use F1 score to measure the machine learning model, model uh, accuracy here. The higher, the better. And we use uh, CPU, GPU usage, as well as memory usage to measure system cost associated with online learning. So let's take a look at one of the end-to-end -end experiments we have around intrusion detection, which we introduced at the beginning. So in this data set, we have 35 million packets with uh, seven different types of attacks. Uh, these new attacks, uh, these attacks would show up gradually as we stream data uh, along the way. So the traffic is highly dynamic. We have a seven layer DNN that runs at line rate in the FPGA for running inference. And we classify each packet as either malicious or benign. We send packets at half a million packets per second. Uh, we run inference and compute accuracy on every packet. But for the control plane part, the software backend, we sample the packets so, so it doesn't uh, uh, overflow the system. So let's start with a small model. So here, y-axis is if one score, the higher, the better. Uh, the x-axis is the time since we started to stream packets. Note that the small model here is pre-trained on some data set that is different from the one we are streaming. So that's why it's running into new attacks that it hasn't encountered before right after we started streaming, and it, that's why it's performing constantly poorly, because it has never seen these data in the offline training stage. So what if we invite a large model to guide a small model? We can see from the blue curve that online learning enables a small model to cope with changing traffic dynamics. We can observe, observe some moments where new attacks show up. Initially, the small model cannot react to the accuracy drop. But later, after online learning, the small model's accuracy goes back up. We can also notice some cases where the large model cannot accurately label online data, which makes the small model fail at the same time. So what it, we, on the last slide, we rely on continuous retraining, which happens as long as we have any data for retraining. 
but is that really necessary? So let's take a look at um, uh, after we introduce selective retraining via accuracy proxy, in other words, the caravan system, we can see that the red curve is overlapping with, almost overlapping with the blue curve for most of the time, indicating that you don't need to always retrain uh, to keep up with changing traffic dynamics. So Caravan keeps in network ML models up to date with changing dynamics, but how about resource usage? So we find that Caravan is able to save us a substantial amount of backend computer resources through selective retraining. It reduces backend CPU usage by an average of 50, 56% with no extra memory overhead. So before I conclude, I would like to quickly uh, discuss the scope of this work and some limitations. In other words, when to and when not to use the Caravan system. So the most compelling use case for Caravan is when we need to do machine learning inference on streaming data in almost real time. So think about things like edge computing or near data computing. But if you want to do offline inference on batch data or historical, historical data, then Caravan is not the right system for you. Also, Caravan it would, would work the best when the model is deployed in a complex and dynamic uh, environment with changing data patterns with like data and concept drifts. Otherwise, a small pre-trained model would be sufficient uh, along the way. And finally, if we have no ground truth labels or no online reward functions, then this is a great use case for Caravan. But if you have, for example, human in the loop labeling data for you uh, with very high accuracy, then you don't want uh, the Caravan system to generate the weak supervision labels for you because you have more accurate ones. So we have much more detail in our paper, including uh, things like more experiments, the user interface, and we also include a very comprehensive uh, analysis of the, the, uh, the GPT-4 use case we have. We put out all the prompts and all the generation examples we have so you can try it out yourself as well. We also open source our artifact, uh, both in software and hardware. You can try it on your own FPGA if, if, you, if you have one. We also have system cost and latency analysis in the paper. So to conclude, we present a Caravan, uh, which is based on two observations. The first one is that large models can guide small models via online learning uh, by serving as a good source of labeling. We can also do sparse online learning uh, to save system resources from excessive retraining. Uh, so uh, we would like, I would like to conclude the talk here, and I, I want to take any questions if there are.